You know what gets me super excited? It's when really seemingly interesting and powerful things are happening in the news when it comes to crypto, but nobody, and yes, I mean literally nobody, seems to give one flying f***. <laughs> That's what gets me excited, guys. And we've got some big stuff happening. And there's some juicy, juicy business happening over at the SEC that we're going to need to go through right now. And guys, if you do have a split second, please do smash that like button because that's all I ask in return for these videos each and every day. And if you guys are looking for a new exchange, I have all of the links down there in my description. You can get over $50,000 worth of deposit bonuses right now just from signing up. So yesterday I did tell you guys that Bitcoin gains legal recognition as a digital currency in Shanghai. This is important because China continually bans crypto during bull markets and then kind of pulls back on that during a bear market and then does the same thing over and over again. Now, China is a huge economy and I think that this is absolutely massive news that the people in China may soon enough be able to trade crypto again and do transactions and it not be a legal problem, like a crime. Right now, it's criminal. So I think this is big and I think no one cares. And guys, I just wanted to let you know that I have started my own little company here with another YouTuber, my financial friend. You may or may not have heard of him, but we have started this new portfolio tracker, right? Because I am sick to death of trying to track my portfolio on all of these different apps because they just don't work. So I wanted to make something that was different, built by people like me for people like me. So it's going to have things like being able to track your portfolio in Bitcoin value or something like Cardano's value or just USDT if that's what you want to track it in. And you're going to be able to track here a number of different things. It's not just going to be crypto. It's going to be stocks, dividends, all of this sort of good stuff, right? You're going to be able to track your net worth in one place and you'll be able to see your net worth in crypto value, which is something that I want to be able to do because I'm a crypto bull, right? With that said, there is also going to be opportunities for you guys to place where your crypto is. So you, within the app, you'll be able to see which wallet you hold your crypto in. Like for me, I have like a hundred different MetaMask addresses because I'm super keen on my security. But every time I have to find where my crypto is, I have to go through all of these wallets or remember it and try and figure out where it is. So I want to save the hassle of that. So you'll be able to track whatever it is, maybe you're trading a meme coin, you can put what the address is into the app. And don't worry, not your seed address or anything, we won't have access to any of that, but just where it is or something that triggers a memory in your mind. And these are all of the things that we want to address, all the problems that we want to address. And there are so many more. And I really think this is going to be an amazing app. I'm just basically going to build it so it does exactly what I want it to do going into the next bull run so I can see a clear insight into all of my assets. And I'm asking for your guys' help. So by clicking the the link in the description and in the pinned comment. You can pre-register for this so you get the first access to it. You're going to put your name, your email address, and then what you're interested in tracking. Do you have any other feedback or suggestions you'd like to see? Because I'd, I'd like this to be a community effort. So if you guys have literally anything you would love to see in a portfolio tracking app that you don't have access to currently, let us know and we can try and implement this for you guys. Now moving on from that, we also have some not so great news, but it is getting a little bit juicy. The SEC delays Bitcoin ETF despite congressional pressure for approval. So let's break down this before we get into the juicy, juicy gossip. Now, the US securities, the SEC, has once again pushed back the decision on a Bitcoin ETF, this time involving the highly anticipated ARK21 Bitcoin ETF. That's ARK Kathy Wood's ETF that she proposed. Now, while the decision was not due until November 11th, the SEC set a new deadline for January 10th. This move is perplexing, especially given the recent letter from bipartisan group of the congressman urging the SEC to approve this spot Bitcoin ETF. Now, this news source is Forbes currently. And in his letter to the SEC chair, Gary Gensdouche, the US representatives Tom Endler, Mike Flood, Richie Torres, and Wiley Nickel call for immediate approval of the Bitcoin ETF. They argue that such investment products offer regulated and secure pathway for investors to engage in Bitcoin. It literally makes no sense, none, that there is no spot Bitcoin ETF approved right now. We have a futures ETF trading right now, trading on leveraged futures right now that you can access through brokerages, but you can't access Bitcoin as an ETF. Like it's, it's just insane. And it does lead me to believe that there is something else going on here. Now, the lawmakers further stressed the importance of regulatory clarity, stating that without a spot Bitcoin ETF, investors might seek riskier, unregulated avenues for investment. 
It makes perfect sense. If people don't have the opportunity to get a regulated instrument like a BlackRock spot ETF, a Vanguard ETF, whatever it is, right? They go elsewhere. And that is the whole point of the SEC. So it just makes no sense. And again, I think there's something else going on. Some here are speculating that this move allows giants like BlackRock to consolidate their positions while hindering platforms like Binance. Now, this is pretty juicy right here. The underlying aim might be to assert control over an increase increasingly decentralized financial ecosystem. So BlackRock using the SEC to control the price of Bitcoin so they can essentially get more and be more in control of this. Now, this is a little bit of a conspiracy that I can get behind that is probably actually happening. Now, it all leads the, me to this because Gary Gensler is acting just like a spoiled brat. He just will not comply and there's just it's just wild. There just doesn't seem to be any reason for it. Now, I want you to watch this video, which is pretty interesting. You refuse to be transparent with Congress regarding your interactions with FTX and Sam Bankman-Fried. That's the investigation we started last Congress. Finally, your lack of responsiveness to this committee's legitimate oversight continues to be unacceptable. And I want to finish here. In February, the committee made multiple requests for documents to the Securities Exchange Commission. This is normal congressional oversight. Yet seven months later, the committee has not received a single non-public document that was not part of a FOIA production. So he's literally treating these guys just like us. Like he just doesn't care. He's not responding. He's not doing. He's not complying. And it's just wild. Like, why is he doing this? As I said, our patience is wearing thin. The SEC is not above the law, nor is it unique. Other financial regulators have routinely complied with congressional oversight. So let me be clear. I do not want to be the first chairman of this committee to issue a subpoena to the Securities Exchange Commission. And you should not want to be the first SEC chair to receive a congressional subpoena. Either we find a path forward where the SEC recognizes Congress as a co-equal branch of government and is responsive to our oversight duties, or my option is to issue a subpoena. It's time for you to consider the lasting consequences of your action, uh, your actions, and what that means to the Securities Exchange Commission's reputation long term. While your time in this role may be temporary, the repercussions for your actions may be permanent for the agency. Now, how insane is that? He's literally threatening him. Let me know down there in the comment section what you guys think is going on. But if we take a look at the different things that he's done, right? The job of the SEC chairman is to be an impartial regulator and Gensler is anything but. In 2019, he applied for a job at Binance and was rejected. He actually flew all the way to Japan to meet CZ. In early 2022, he had a closed door meeting with SPF and FTX employees. What? He also has a former colleague at the CFTC, Ryan Miller, who served as FTX's general counsel. Another former colleague at MIT, Glenn, is the father of Caroline Ellison. Like, what? You could argue that, that they are just former colleagues, but it paints a picture of a man who cannot execute his role as an impartial regulator because he has ties to FTX, especially when he's currently pursuing Binance after being rejected for a job by them. It's absolutely wild, guys. I don't, yeah, let me know what you think. I think he needs to get out, and I think that he's probably going to get fired, and someone who will come in and be more uh, crypto-friendly is going to come, and that's going to be the start of the next bull run, all right? That's going to help us in the next bull run. So this is bad stuff. Stuff, but not necessarily that bad considering we're already in a bear market. It just gives us time to accumulate just like BlackRock is accumulating. Now, on top of that, we do also have JP Morgan Chase UK to block crypto payments from clients amid fraud concerns saying making a payment, making a payment will decline it. Now, the UK... The US and Australia are all closing their doors to crypto. It seems pretty insane to me. And, you know, I kind of am of the feeling that they're going to turn around and change these rules. They're going to turn around and realize what they're doing wrong here. But I do not know. But things are not looking good for the West when it comes to crypto, right? But Bitcoin's price right now is holding steady, even though the S&P 500 is plunging to a 110 day low. So we can see the S&P 500 falling downwards. Now we had an uptrend, we broke the uptrend and we are trending downwards. Now, if you do just zoom out, the S&P 500 looks very strong. But I was talking about, to the, I was talking about this to a friend and what do we know is going to happen, right? When the West continues to do things like closing their doors to crypto, are they going to be taken over by other economies? Now, I think that yes, I think the answer is yes. America is not going to stay the global superpower. Others are going to come and join it. 
But I don't think this will affect companies because companies in America like Google, Amazon, NVIDIA, all of them are still going to service the other countries. So I still think companies in the S&P 500 will still do well long term. So I think this is another blip on the radar, just like we've seen so many times before in the S&P 500. Now, with that said, we do also have Benjamin Cohen talking about the death cross, which we covered here on the channel a few weeks ago. And right now, so far, the rally has just shown lower highs, which is pretty typical. So the general idea is that Bitcoin pumps into a death cross, finds a lower high, and the downtrend continues. So be prepared for the downtrend for Bitcoin to continue from here if Benjamin Cohen is right. And I'm going to continue to bring you guys updates each and every day as to what is going on in this market. With that said, smash the like button, hit the subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.